So last year, um, we ended up making some crab apple spread from some crab apples that we picked at, uh, from the beach. And uh, they turned out amazingly. And um, we plan on doing it again this year. So we went to the same beach. We we're going to a sort of, uh, sort of a little cove, a uh, little hideaway. And unfortunately, the tide, uh, the storm surges had come up and taken down the crab apple trees. So um, the crab apple tree that we went to last year was gone. Um, I was sort of sad about that, but uh, we came back and uh, I ran into someone that told me that there was a crab apple tree in the neighborhood. So I went and picked uh, these, uh, these crab apples here. Um, the little bit um, redder. Uh, than the crab apples that we picked last year, but I ended up getting a nice, nice supply, right? This is, uh, if you remember the honey video that we made, this big bucket here is the, uh, is the bucket of honey that we jarred, right? So this is a 20 pound bucket of honey. I'm not sure how many pounds it is for the crab apples. And uh, this is a pot and this is a five pound honey, honey bucket that we had as well. Uh, that we basically clean up the buckets and we keep them because they come in really handy. Um, so we ended up making this crab apple spread last year and it was our first time making it. So one thing I want to do is uh, sort of make the process a little bit simpler because what we ended up doing was uh, using two parts crab apples, uh, one part sugar, right? So it wasn't as sweet as like jelly uh, because we didn't want to use too much sugar. So uh, basically, for every two pounds of uh, crab apples, we'd use one pound of sugar or even less, right? Depending on the taste of the crab apples, right? So that's what we're going to do this year as well. And there's one other thing I should mention in the recipe. So for a pot like this, and we don't fill up the whole pot, you know, we bring it down to, you know, leave a little room because it's going to, you know, foam up or liquefy or whatever it goes through the process of cooking right and we gotta add the sugar as well we add a little bit of water and for a pot like this we add about one to one and a half maximum of two uh squeezed lemon juices okay and i'll maybe i'll get a chance to show you guys how i ended up making it but basically to simplify the process for us uh because what we did was we cooked the crab apples and then we have this thing that we put it on a on a pot and we twirl it around and it gets rid of the seeds and the stems but because all these crab apples have a lot of these little like you can see right a lot of little stems um, what we want to do or what I want to do is I uh, get rid of these stems here okay and uh, hopefully that's gonna make it a little simpler for us uh, doing the process where we're you know twirling the sieve I don't know I'm not, I'm not sure what the word for it is. Um, again, maybe we'll get a chance to take a look at that. So basically what I want to do right now is get rid of all these little stems uh, from the crab apples or as much of them as possible. Um, and I thought we'd sit down and do it. And what we're going to do is uh, I got a bucket here, uh, like another square big bucket where we're going to throw the garbage basically. Um, we'll throw the good crab apples in here in uh, this glass jar and uh, once this glass jar gets filled up I have another uh, you know 20 pound honey bucket uh, same as this one uh, here so as soon as this fills up we're going to transfer it to here and keep on going because I do want to clean this stuff today um, I picked it about three days ago and there's I've been looking at some of them and you can tell some of these are starting to go south a little bit uh, they're a little ripe uh, you know they're still edible they don't go you know well within reason of course right uh, these just turn like this so it's just really just fermented crab, crab apples right but I'm gonna not include those in the cook okay so I do need to basically what I'm gonna do is grab the tails and just pull it off right throw it in the bucket and basically if there isn't too much, I'm just gonna cut off these guys, right? Just get rid of the formatted stuff and throw it in here. And if you can tell, take a look. If you see this, right? See that seed? 
So once we cook it up, the crab apples, they, they really just, they just break down, right? But we still have to get rid of the little seeds, okay? Because it's, you know, we want to use it as a spread. We don't want it to be, uh, to be crunchy, right? So basically that's what uh, we're going to do right now is get rid of the stems. And sometimes you can pull them off, but I'm going to do it with a knife too. Make sure I'm just using the same process and that way I can cut off some of the formatted stuff. Right. So, okay. And of course we're going to get rid of the leaves. Some of them are just fine, right? I don't need to do anything with them. When I picked them, I was going ballistic with this. This isn't. This was in the neighborhood, so I was on the on the took our little three-step ladder thing we had, uh, and I just uh, it was a really big tree, so there was a uh, a lot of it overhanging onto the sidewalk. All of this is basically from the sidewalk uh, part of uh, the tree and there's still lots more left on there right, there's only so much I can cook I can make see some of the stuff is already formatting if there's a lot of this I'm just gonna cook it uh, I'm not sure if there is or not not good huh? at all. Look at that. That one goes in the garbage.
if it's inside or not.
close-up of uh, cutting these stemming, these uh, these crab apples. Okay, and then we'll go cook them. This is going to be loud. 